Adaptive refresh rate technology is nothing new. Visa officially adopted it for DisplayPort 1.2a in 2014, with both Nvidia and AMD releasing their own versions in 2015. Nvidia using a dedicated G-Sync module, whereas AMD basically just stuck a label on Visa standard and made it work with their GCN 2.0 architecture GPUs. The way it works hasn't changed really all that much either, at least in principle. It's still, the monitor still just waits for the graphics card to have finished drawing the frame and send it to it rather than just refreshing on its own and hoping there's a new frame, which helps it eliminate tearing, which is when a frame gets sort of halfway drawn before the next one starts getting drawn as well, causing a visible tear line. Both Nvidia and AMD have added new features over the years though, namely HDR with Adaptive Sync enabled, and both have tweaked and refined them, and refined the, the tech to make them slightly better. But there is one question that a lot of people who want to buy these monitors have been asking. How does it affect input lag? Especially for high FPS competitive games, are you better off leaving variable refresh rate off, or does it not make a difference, or even does it make your experience better? Well, I've got this Gigabyte G27Q, a 1440p 144Hz IPS monitor with FreeSync, and this, the ASUS PG259QNR, a 360Hz 1080p 25-inch monitor with G-Sync Ultimate, and their Reflex Latency Analyzer, plus NVIDIA's LDAT tool, a high-speed camera, and glaringly too much time on my hands. Let's start off with FreeSync, as that's the one that's generally more common these days, it's the, the more available option, plus FreeSync monitors can also now count as G-Sync compatible, so what's the plan? Well, I'm using my underdesk PC, which is now rocking a GTX 1080 Ti, and I've got CSGO running at over 600 FPS. I've got LDAT over the flash from the bullet hitting the metal sign that I'm firing against. I'll have it fire 20 shots at 0.3 second intervals, and I'll do that with both adaptive sync enabled and disabled. The results? Remarkably, there is no difference. Really, variable refresh rate on nets 38.679 milliseconds of input latency versus 38.599 with variable refresh rate off. Even looking at the minimums and maximums, it's well within margin of error, and tracing each shot on a graph doesn't lend much information either. At least on this monitor and using an NVIDIA GPU, there doesn't seem to be much, if any, difference between the input lag results with FreeSync Premium enabled. I also tried disabling it on the monitor itself rather than through the software, which came back at 36.6 milliseconds average, and, but realistically that is close enough that uh, it's well within the variance that I experienced from run to run on this, so I'd be looking for more like over 5 milliseconds to call it a plausible difference that you'd actually have a hope in hell of noticing or truly benefiting from in-game, so it's pretty much close enough. So that's FreeSync, but what about Nvidia's shiny new G-Sync Ultimate? That still uses a dedicated G-Sync module, rather than the standard VESA scaler that you'll find in models like this. G-Sync Ultimate, much like AMD's FreeSync Premium Pro, offers HDR with variable refresh rates enabled, and is rated to hit the astonishing 360Hz that this ASUS PG259QNR can hit. Full review of this coming very soon by the way, so stay tuned. So how does this one compare? Well, it's rather interesting. This is the exact same test using LDAT in CSGO, it's running its full 360Hz refresh rate, and with G-Sync off, it ran 26.3 milliseconds of input lag on average, whereas with G-Sync on, it ran 28.865 milliseconds on average. Interestingly, this setup was actually much more consistent than the FreeSync monitor, so the difference is a bit more certain. It's still not significant enough or notable that you would really care. It's about one frame at 360 hertz, which is insanely quick. I should note that the minimums and maximums were better with G-Sync Off 2, with the maximum being almost 10 milliseconds faster. But that's not the whole story. 
See, this PG259QNR has a display mode called G-Sync Esports. And I wouldn't be a, a good tester if I didn't test in that mode. With G-Sync off, the result was pretty much the same running 26.349 milliseconds of average latency, which is only 0.01 milliseconds off the standard G-Sync off results. But remarkably, with G-Sync on, it ran just 24.6 milliseconds of average latency. Yeah, almost two milliseconds faster with G-Sync on than with it off, and over four milliseconds faster than running G-Sync on and in the standard display modes. At this point, you might be thinking, why am I testing at well above each of these monitors' maximum refresh rates? Well, one, the reason for that is that this is the experience you'll have playing a game like CSGO, which is the sort of game where your input lag actually matters the most. But I get it, some games aren't quite as lightweight as CSGO, so let's test it at 100 FPS capped in gate. This isn't perfect, but it should give us a rough idea of what it's like running in a game maybe like Warzone, where you're running closer to that sort of 100, 150 FPS average. Starting with FreeSync, uh, with it disabled, it ran almost identically to the original result at 38.827 milliseconds average albeit with much higher uh, maximums, a peak of nearly 90 milliseconds, which is up from the 53 average. That's what happens when a frame doesn't quite line up or has to wait or doesn't even get drawn. But with variable refresh rate enabled, it actually drops it to 33.2 milliseconds average. That's potentially significant enough to be a, a notable or at least a, a functional improvement while gaming. What about G-Sync? That run was, again, pretty similar to its stock result running at 26.7265 milliseconds average, with only slightly worse minimums, but not by much. G-Sync on? 26.662 milliseconds average. Yeah, pretty much identical. The minimums maximums were a little worse, with the maximum being a full 10 milliseconds slower, but I wouldn't really call that significant enough to have a, a disadvantage. That was in the G-Sync specific mode too, which is interesting to see it not improve much, if at all, over it being disabled. So rather conclusively, if you have a G-Sync Ultimate monitor with a dedicated G-Sync mode, use it. It's legitimately better, and running four milliseconds faster on average is enough to call that a decent improvement. But how does G-Sync stack up to FreeSync? Well, in the max FPS results, even the worst case with G-Sync on but not in its dedicated mode was still around eight milliseconds faster than the best case results I got out of the G27Q. But it's important to note that these two monitors aren't directly comparable. This is a 1080p 360Hz monster, and this is a more budget-friendly 1440p 144Hz option, so odds are Gigabyte didn't go all out getting the fastest possible scaler, whereas for this ASUS one, this is the very top of the line and costs well over double what the Gigabyte one does. With that said, the fact that this G-Sync mode can actually decrease input lag with variable refresh rate enabled, that's clearly impressive and shows a technological advantage of having a dedicated module, even if you have to spend a hell of a lot more to get it. But that's not to shame FreeSync at all. It's fantastic knowing that it doesn't have a sizable impact on your gaming performance with it enabled or disabled, and at lower frame rates, it might actually improve your experience. And either way, neither will significantly affect or hurt your gaming performance. Of course, these results don't necessarily speak for every monitor or game or setup. Your results will vary, so take all of this with a pinch of salt and treat it as a good sign, but far from complete.
Different GPUs, hell even CPUs in certain games, and even in-game settings will also vary this widely, and both of these monitors are also pretty new, so older versions of both FreeSync and G-Sync may also perform differently too. Personally, I'm really pleased to see that even this budget 1440p 144Hz monitor with FreeSync enabled doesn't have a significant gap in its performance. Of course, it wasn't the fastest results we were seeing, sort of 38 average here versus more like 26, but either way, it's still a pretty good experience. And again, it's nice to know that at least for this setup, there isn't a significant difference. So with that said, those are my thoughts and results, but I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Would you pick a G-Sync monitor for its slight technological advantage, or would you rather save your money and get a FreeSync one instead? Also, what do you think of FreeSync, G-Sync, and G-Sync compatible? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave links to both of these monitors in the description down below if you wanna check them out. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store, where you can see pricing when and when you watch this, because it can and does vary. There's also a whole load of other links in the description down below you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one. This is my at the wheel tee, but there's also some Tectum GB ones if you're interested. And a load of other links like Overclock, GK affiliate links, VPN options, Humble Bundle, Streamlabs, OES, a load of stuff. Feel free to check it out. There's also going to be plenty of other videos on the end cards, maybe the G27Q review if you haven't checked that out already. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the PG259QNR review when that comes out shortly. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'm going to get out of here because I am sweaty as hell because it's roasting. And we'll see you all in the next video.